Well, we've made a good start and we've agreed on what test we're going to use. We'll stick the needle in on a well-known acupuncture point just here. And for the real acupuncture, we'll stick the needle in quite deep and do a brain scan of the volunteer. As a control, we're going to just stick the needle in a short distance and twist it, and then do the brain scan. And so, by comparing those two, we ought to be able to see the difference between the real acupuncture and the control. This is a genuine piece of new research. We plan to look deep into the brain during acupuncture to find out, one way or another, whether acupuncture is having a measurable effect on the body. Oh, that's fantastic. 16, now all we've got to do is set yeah. the experiment up. Mark talks to the team about volunteers, questionnaires, scientific protocols, as well as tracking down the most powerful scanner available. The setup was just incredible. The constant phone calls. I mean, within a few minutes of someone putting the phone down, there'd be someone else on the phone saying, are you sure this protocol's right? Are you sure you shouldn't do the control like this? You shouldn't change that? Everyone was so panicky about the control, so worried that they weren't going to get the control, because once you've started the study, you're completely committed. The whole team are now really fired up. And the stakes are getting pretty high for everyone. The scientists are quite convinced they're not going to see anything unusual happening in the brain during acupuncture. Whereas the acupuncturists are a bit worried that if they don't see anything interesting, well, it kind of undermines their whole profession. Finally, it's the big day. Hugh will lead the study and carry out the acupuncture. Aziz will scrutinize the data and analyze the results. Mark and I will be on hand to check what's going on. And we've pulled off a coup. We've persuaded the University of York to let us use their state-of-the-art scanning equipment. Now, we've come here to York to do these experiments. Why here? Well, this is, they've got here the new generation of MRI scanners, what's called the, the three Tesla version, which is a relatively high field strength. Only a few years ago, they were what's called one and a half Tesla, so it's doubled in field strength. So it's a hefty, big <laughs> MRI scanner. Big magnet in there. The MRI takes stills, like photographs of the brain, but we're also going to use a more advanced form of scanning. It's like using, perhaps having a, a video footage where you get a continuous stream of data so you can actually follow someone's thoughts in real time far closer than you can do even with the big scanners here. So using these two techniques together, we ought to be able to see deeper into the brain what's going on at a particular time when acupuncture is going on. I think so. No, firstly, no one's combined these two techniques on the same patients. That's, that's a complete first here. This particular design of study is a complete first, trying to rule out certain features. And using this field strength with this magnetic field has not been done before. So there's lots of firsts that are going on in this study. If you don't find it here, you're not going to find it anywhere. <laughs> the massive magnet is powerful enough to pick up a car. So each of the volunteers has to check for anything metal on their bodies. The only thing I was worried about was metallic toenail polish. It's far it's enough silver. away, you're going from collarbones up, so okay. that's far enough away, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're just about to go into the room, but first of all, we need to, to make Hugh sure... Hugh takes the volunteers you know, through the, the escape the drill. Okay. Once inside the MRI, they'll be locked behind a six-inch steel door designed to seal the scanner from the Earth's magnetic field. Okay. Okay. Mechan mechanical way of getting out. So if there's a power cut, for example... Right, this and you're unconscious. <laughs> but the thing is, actually, I'm in the room with you, so... But this is part of our regular safety routine. The team are trying to detect the tiniest changes in the brain when the needles are inserted. Even the smallest error at this stage could invalidate the entire experiment. We've tried as hard as possible to be absolutely rigorous. So we're doing everything we know to make sure that we're really looking only at the effect of the acupuncture needle. We've randomised everything as much as we can. We've made sure the patients don't know what they're getting. We've even tried to, to not 
let the practitioner know, the acupuncturist know, what he's going to be doing until the last moment. Ten seconds till we rest. Three, two, one, start. Finally, the experiment begins. A scan is first taken of the brain at rest, the baseline. So you can hear that. So that's taking images now. Now it's having a little bit of a baseline period while they're working sort of to get effectively the mind or the thoughts while they're at rest. Then the team scan the brain when the needles are inserted. Hugh then twists the needle. This usually generates an achy, tingling sensation called de chi. When the needle is, is stimulated, you quite often elicit this de chi sensation, and acupuncturists often look for that. They look for a de chi sensation as, as part of the healing, healing activity of the, of the acupuncture. Three, two, one, start. Part of the excitement for me of this experiment is that it's really bringing together Eastern approaches to acupuncture and a really rigorous Western scientific way of thinking. And it could completely change the way that we see acupuncture. Buried away in his lab at York University, Aziz begins to analyse the data. It'll be weeks before the analysis will be complete and we'll find out what, if anything, our experiment has revealed. At last, results day. Now, the results are looking really interesting. But, Hugh, maybe you could just summarise the main findings for us really clearly. First of all, with superficial needling, you know, we get a picture in the brain of a certain, this area lighting up, in other words, becoming activated, increased blood flow. And if you look at this, this brain here, this is the, the front of the brain here, and this is the back, and we have a cut out there just so you can see inside better what's happening. That's no surprise. This is just the brain's normal response to the needle being lightly inserted. What we found with deep needling, if we had de chi, the de chi sensation on the needle, that's the aching sensation, what we picked up was deactivation. Areas of the brain here, further back, um, where the, we've, we've coloured that blue. Acupuncture was having a real effect on the brain, and it was doing something completely unexpected. It was a result that surprised us all. That reinforces the idea that something quite special is happening, something unique to acupuncture, something physiological. Well, as a neuroscientist, I, I'm particularly interested in activations of the brain, but the surprising thing about this study is that we have deactivations, a decrease in neuronal activity, and that's something I think that neuroscientists have got to take into account. Well, for me, the most extraordinary thing is out of this whole study is that we've got what you might call objective evidence. We've got biological correlates of acupuncture. Something's happening in the brain when you put a needle in. Different things happen with superficial and deep and they're clearly associated with acupuncture and it's something you can actually measure and quantify. Superficial needles. But the team was even more excited to discover where it was happening. ...associated with the needling, the superficial needling, also activated these deeper structures around here. The area of the brain affected by the deep needling was an area often called the limbic system this part here was also activated and what we know about these deeper structures is they're associated with our experience of pain or yes how we experience pain how we modulate pain and it's known as the pain matrix that sounds really exciting you're saying that the bit of the brain 
that helps us decide whether something's painful, the kind of threshold that we have for pain, we think perhaps is being affected by acupuncture and so maybe that helps to explain why acupuncture can help with chronic pain. That's one hypothesis. Certainly it's a guess and it, I would say it's quite a good guess, yeah. Well, well, that's quite remarkable. So, the discovery that parts of the pain matrix become less active by deep needling with de chi is astonishing. Why? Why on earth would just that de chi sensation, you know, be associated with deactivations? That we don't know. But when you tie it in with the fact that acupuncturists use de chi, does then these deactivations start to give us the, the key to how acupuncture works? That's what puts a smile on my face. It's just incredible, I think, the way that acupuncturists say what really matters in acupuncture is de chi. And then here we are, you, neuroscientist, is saying, oh, we find that this amazing thing going on in the brain that we don't really understand that well, the deactivation, the being less active than normal, that only seems to happen during de chi. And maybe that's coincidence, or maybe that's the key to something really interesting. I'm sure scientists will continue to examine acupuncture. After all, huge gaps still remain in our understanding of this ancient medicine. But for me, the results of our experiment do add weight to many of the stories I've heard in my travels. It's been quite a journey for me. I started off pretty sceptical about acupuncture. It just didn't make sense from a scientific point of view. Then I found evidence that it really does work for some kinds of pain. And then the experiment was just hugely exciting to take a step towards understanding what's going on in the brain. So it's been an astonishing time. And I believe that acupuncture still has a lot to teach us about the way our own brain 